Hello Year 9, welcome back. Week 5 of my less GCCP lessons. This whistle stop taster foundation knowledge tour. Please feel free to go back over any videos that you've been watching if you're unsure, confused, thirsty for more knowledge, whatever. Hope you got on okay with the definitions of the different types of fitness and matching them up with a sport former and you got some exercise in having a go at some made up exercises for each one. Um, this week we're going to finish up by looking at how we could test each type of fitness. So if you remember last week I said everyone has different levels of fitness, some people are good at endurance types of fitness, some people better at strength types of fitness. We're going to look at how you can see how good you were. So when we come back you will be taking part in doing these tests so you'll have a go at doing them also have a go at some different types of training designed to improve different elements of those tests um, but it is really important to remember what i'm going to talk to you about now is a test it's not a way to train these are things that you would do before you start training or before you start a training program to see where your fitness level currently is and then maybe you train for so many weeks and then you do the test again to see if your fitness has improved. So these aren't ways to train. These are ways to test how good your fitness level is in certain um, areas. So if you remember last week we had cardiovascular endurance. We looked at the definition. No ability of your heart and lungs to work for a long period of time. The way we test that, again when my slow laptop works, is a couple of different ways. So first way is to take part in something called a multi-stage fitness test. Now this is otherwise known as the bleep test. So some of you will have had a go at this before. It's a really good way to test the cardiovascular drugs. Essentially you set out a 20 minute distance with cones and you play, we play a recording to you and within the recording there are beeps. So basically it counts you down, so it's 3, 2, 1, go, beep. And the idea is that you run to the other end of the 20 meters and you time it so that you get to the other side when the second beep goes beep and you turn around and you go back again so essentially you're just running backwards and forwards with the beeps and each time it goes up a level the beeps get closer together so you have to pick up your speed and you just keep going basically until you can no longer match the beeps or until the point where you're exhausted and you need to drop out it's brutal but also actually can be really fun and uh interesting to see where you get to gives you something to aim for and something to improve on if you can look here this is what we call normative data. So for each test, it has a set of data that you can find on the internet. And these are for women and men, so probably over the age of 25, 25 or over probably. But you, or maybe 18 or over. But you can um, find ones that relate to your age group online as well. And it's basically just a way of, so you basically do the test, see where you get to. Say you got to, I don't know, level 10 and you're a woman you would be classed as excellent. So you basically just find your level and it tells you what level your fitness is at. So, pretty good. Another way to test your cardiovascular endurance is to do a 12 minute Cooper run. Now we've done this in lessons before. Again, can be brutal, can be enjoyable. Just depends on what type of person you are. Sorry guys, my battery is running a bit late then. So, as I was saying, um, it can be fun, just depends on what type of person you are. So the way you carry out this test is... When my laptop stops working again... Come on. Okay, so you complete the maximum distance in 12 minutes. So normally you would run around a 400 metre track. You don't have to have a 400 metre track, but you do need to know the distance of your track. Obviously you count your laps, and then you can work out how far you've run. Um, and you just keep going for the 12 minutes. Um, ideally running the whole time without walking um, and then as you can see here it records you can compare your result to the normative data and it can tell you um, how well you've done basically so this is distance in meters so that's why I say you need to know the distance that you're running around um, to give you an equation so So for example, this is 1,600 metres, that would be four laps around the track. 
so you need to manage a lot more than that but this this data is for men and women as well okay endoscope endurance then so the ability of your muscles to work for a long period of time test for that two different tests first one is the one minute sit-up test so remember this is only going to test the endurance of certain muscles so in this case it's going to test the endurance of your abdominal muscles and it's just you count how many sit-ups you can perform in one minute and then there you go you can see some of the data for that you could have a go at this test at home and i would use this column here remember this is from this is that was for males let me go back that was for males and that is for females but i would use the 18 to 25 column to give you an idea of how how well you've done and your task this week is to have a go at some of the tests so the ones that you could perform at home have a go compare your results the data I'll take a photo of this screen as um, you're going through the video then you can have a go at the press up test i don't know why that says sit up it should say press up there and not sit up again same thing however many sets press ups you can do in one minute count them and then compare to the data so again you'll see here this column age group is probably the closest one to you guys so it's the one that i would use this is the data for males and then this is the data for females so depending on how many you do we'll place you somewhere here tell you how good your muscle endurance is but remember you're only testing certain muscles associated with that exercise speed then we talked about speed last week good for a 100 meter sprinter the test is something called a 30 meter sprint so if you go to your local park and measure out 30 meters get somebody to time you covering that distance basically start and stop standing start not a uh, racing start and then here you go you've got the data again now again remember this is males and females so it's going to be slightly different for you guys but again you can use this you can have a go at doing this test at home and use this as a measurement my advice is that you record these results because they could become really handy when we come back into school strength then two ways to test strength one is the one rep max test so that is where you pick an exercise of your choice here you can see this guy in the picture has chosen to do leg press so he's testing the muscular strength within his legs and he basically just performs that at the maximum weight that he can achieve and then obviously that weight is the highest that he could do or you can have this device we have one of these in school called a hand grip dynamometer and it will measure the strength in your arm. So you start with it above your head, squeeze down here like this person has on the grip, measure and it will take a reading for you and tell you how strong you are basically. That's the data. Obviously this is one that you wouldn't be able to carry out at home. I would be very surprised if anyone has one of these at home. But again, this is normative data. So data that is, that is classed as normal and you compare your results to that to see how well you've done. Power then. So it's a combination of strength and speed, two different tests. One is called the vertical jump. You will notice we have this in the sports hall now in the corner. So like it says, you stand, you reach the highest point without going onto your tiptoes, and then you jump vertically on the board and measure the distance between the two, between the two measurements. I'll tell you how far you've jumped. And then you compare it to the normative data. It tells you how well you've done. You'll see that for most of the normative data, there's a difference between males and females. That's not sexist. It's just that males and females are scientifically, physiologically made up very differently. So there needs to be allowances or different, or not allowances. There needs to be changes in the data to represent um, their physiology, basically. Uh, the second test of power then is the standing jump. This is probably one that you could have a go at home if you've got something that you can measure the distance with. So the athletes jump horizontally as far as possible, landing with both feet together, measure and record the distance from the start line to the nearest point. Now the nearest point, just as in long jump, would be from the point furthest back towards the start line. So if you fall back, for example, or wherever, you, or your heel, so you don't measure it from the front of your foot, you measure it from the back. Again, here's a normative data that you can use. If you're going to have a go at this one at home, I'll take a screenshot of this. Um, data for you to compare your result against flexibility then so sit and reach we have a sit and reach box at school so it goes against the wall toes go up against it and then you push and reach as far as you can along the box and it will give you a result and again there's some data to compare 
agility then it's called the illinois agility test this is because the test originated uh, was created at the university of illinois and again it's going to measure your ability to change direction with speed so this little course is set up there's 10 meters between these two cones and then there's it's 10 meters across so this cone is set here at five meters and then two meters in between each one here you could have a go at this at home if you've got some objects you could set out in a garden or at your local park and get somebody to time you going around the course. Make sure you get the course right, so take a screenshot of this, it's up, down, in and out, in and out, up, down. That's the way I try and get people to remember it. Again, record your result and compare it to the data. Now the start position is like this, so if this is a start line, you start laying down with your hands there, so you're getting up from a laying down start. Balance then. Again, another one you could complete at home. It's called the stalk balance test. So as you can see in this position, you place what you lift your right leg and you place this place the sole of your right foot against the left side of your kneecap, and then also oh and then you go up onto your toes. Now you can do it with shoes on or shoes off, and it's timed holding this position for as long as possible. But remember, you must go up onto your toes. Again, there is some data. This one is quite a difficult one. I mean, I think this is quite hard to achieve this level of balance but some people might be really good remember perfect practice is going to make it permanent <laughs> coordination then again this is another one you can do at home if you've got a couple of tennis balls so the ability to move two or more body parts at the same time and we do what we call the alternate wall throw so you stand two meters from a wall tennis balls thrown with your right hand and then caught with your left hand and then left hand throw right hand catch and you just keep repeating that alternating each time and you do that for 30 seconds and you record your number of catches it doesn't matter if you drop the ball you just start you just pick up where you were counting from you don't need to go back to zero or anything like that again there's your normative data for this wall throw remember it's only 30 seconds and it gives your close to close as it can to your specific age group here reaction time then so you can notice here as well that it doesn't split this category into male and female. I think that's because there really shouldn't be much difference with this um, type of fitness. Reaction time. The time taken to respond to a stimulus. The way that we can test this is do something called a ruler drop. So as you can see in this diagram, you need a decent sized ruler. If you've got a 30 meter ruler, it will do. Somebody holds it beneath your fingers here, poised just slightly above, not too far. And make sure it's zero at the bottom and the ruler is released and then you have to catch the ruler and then wherever you manage to catch it you take that measurement on the ruler again here here's the normative data again no difference between males and females for this type of fitness another one you can have a go at home so if you go back through you'll see the ones that are feasible for you to have a try at you can just adapt them slightly now the best way to make sure that a test is reliable is to complete it three times and then recall and then take your average score uh, another way to make a test reliable is to make sure all the control measures are the same so each time you repeat it you repeat it in the same way also test that some of your equipment is working properly test that you know how to carry out the test correctly using the correct procedure it's very similar to if you were conducting a science experiment um, just to try and avoid as much human error as possible and keep this the environment that you're doing the test in the same every time. We want test results to be reliable and valid, otherwise the type of training that we set from them is not going to be accurate and it's not going to maximise and not allow you to make the best progress or for you to allow you to see the best progress. So that's just really important here. Um, have a look at your facts to learn which is basically just each test and the protocol and then your task is to obviously have a go at any of the tests Hello, that mommy. are on there Hello, mommy. Hello, <laughs> okay I'm gonna go now <laughs> sorry that was my little boy I'm gonna go now um speak to you all again soon don't hesitate to Wait, mommy. Shh, be quiet don't hesitate to email me over the holidays and um hopefully see you all soon Take care, bye.